In the headlines, a much tougher retaining wall to form part of major rehabilitation work at Douglas Charles Airport. Aid Bank reports its second largest net profit in four decades as the Prime Minister calls on customers to be more responsible in servicing their loans. And credit union members whose loan repayment was affected by Erica may have to renegotiate as a six-month grace period has come to an end. I am Lorraine Graham Carter with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. Top in the news, a more resilient retaining wall is among works to be done as part of a $31.27 million rehabilitation project of the Douglas Charles Airport. A Channel 5 News team visited the project site on Wednesday. Idono John Baptist has this report. For the past two months, French company Sostradam has been engaged in rehabilitation works at the Douglas Charles Airport. This project is necessary since the passage of Tropical Storm Erica in August 2015 caused in excess of 40 million EC dollars to the Douglas Charles Airport. So far, debris has been cleared around the shoulders of the airstrip and workers are knocking down the broken retaining wall affected by Tropical Storm Erica. We have the taxiway to do and the uh, aprons, okay? And uh, we're doing some rock armor on the side of the wall. And that's basically what we're doing now. Essentially, what have you been contracted to do? We uh, contracted to the, the river wall, the bridge, the bridge, the taxiway, and the apron, and the drain, the drainage. Dredging is taking place all the way at the top of the airport, as you can see behind me, and to further strengthen what is going on here and to prevent the threat of future flash floods, a retaining wall will be built at the top of the airstrip. Dredging of the Melville Hall River started last week following heavy rains last Tuesday, which caused the river to flood, forcing temporary closure of the airport. The plan for this retaining wall is to build it thicker and higher with more reinforcement bars to hold the concrete. Now we break the top of the old wall to find the steel, the existing steel, and dowel into it, epoxy, and we put steel again into it, both sides steel. Okay. Before, the wall was just on top with just normal steel, so it fell down. But it's not this company that built it, it was the company before. So how thick will this wall be? Can 300 thickness, 300 by a meter high, 100 millimeter higher than the previous wall. What about the dredging though? Can you say how long that will go on for? Well, for the whole month, and maybe this month and maybe next month, because we have to drop from the bridge coming right down to that airport, the, the end of the airport. We'll do a rock armor right through us against the wall okay. to prevent the water from coming up, okay. to, to prevent the flooding at the airport. What you see here is equipment Sotradom will be using for the project. And around this area served as the apron for a Marijet aircraft. However, since the taxiway and apron have been damaged by the storm's impact, a Marijet service to the island is interrupted. The apron is the area of an airport where aircraft are packed, unloaded, or loaded, refueled, or boarded. Safety officer at the airport, Dayton Baptist, has asked the traveling public to be patient as he says work continues to ensure things are back to normal. My role as the safety officer here is to make sure that um, things are in place so that um, we could have a, a safe passage to the travelers so it, that are traveling anywhere around this world. So, um, it is my duty to monitor what is going on, the works that are going around the airport, to make sure that things are in place so that we could all be feel safe whenever we travel. In. And let me take again this opportunity to thank the, the, the staff at the airport, especially the young recruits, the firemen. At the last flooding, they did a wonderful job with us um, trying to get back this cleaned up and make sure it's back and running. Also, let me say thanks to Gadakan for assisting us greatly in getting back this airport on stream. While government has given June month and as its completion date, the contracted company is actually eyeing May as its deadline. Idona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. 
In other major news, the Agricultural Industrial Development Bank has reported its second largest net profit in its 44-year history. Here's more. This disclosure was made by Chairman of the Board of Directors, Martin Charles, as he addressed the bank's 23rd annual general meeting on Wednesday. I am especially delighted this morning to report that net profit for the financial year was 2.69 million, which was 3.08% lesser than the restated 2.78 million net profit recorded in 2014. This is the bank's second largest profit after restated figure for the financial year ending June 30th, 2014, which was the largest in the bank's 44-year history. Charles says the bank foresees more challenges in the near future. Despite the challenging external environment, the bank's performance was satisfactory. While we are reporting a relatively good year, the future outlook is less encouraging, threatened by some loans that sit on the horizon of non-performing that will make our task as a bank more difficult. The most urgent challenge faced by the bank at present is liquidity. Too much liquidity is an indication of a lack of bankable projects and too little implies that additional sources of liquidity are required. Charles was delivering the institution's financial report for the period 1st July 2014 to 30th June 2015. In related news, Dominicans have been called upon to be responsible in servicing their loans. The word of advice came from the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance as he addressed the Aid Bank's 23rd Annual General Meeting on Wednesday. That we must respect our legal agreements. If we borrow, there is a responsibility to repay. And if, you have, if you're experiencing difficulties in repaying, then you must go to the bank and engage the bank in discussions to see whether they can refinance or extend your loan repayments. But by neglecting the responsibility and being also publicly defiant of, those, um, of your dereliction of, of responsibility and duty, is not sitting well with our country. Mr. Skerritt says the non-payment of loans by locals can negatively affect the aid bank's repayment plans to international organizations. The aid bank is a creature of the state. And by virtue of it being a creature of the state, it means that all of the liabilities belong to the state. So for example, the bank borrows money from international regional financial institutions. In almost 100% of those cases, the loans must be guaranteed by the state with what is called a sovereign guarantee, which means, in essence, that if the bank fails or is unable to pay its creditors, then the Treasury of Dominica has a legal obligation to repay the sums borrowed by the aid bank. On to police news now, police have confirmed that a vehicle stolen from a car rental company in Goodwill has been used in the burglary at another car rental in Czech Hall. The police say the Toyota RAV4 registration number TJ962 belonging to courtesy car rentals was stolen between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. on Monday, 21st March 2016 and abandoned opposite the Massac Primary School at Czech Hall. They then caught into the wire fencing of the Highway Auto Center at Czech Hall, broke into the office where they took keys to two motor vehicles, namely one silver Mitsubishi Pajero registration number TJ167 and one grey Honda HRV registration number TL706 belonging to Roadrunner Rentals. A number of other items including a Lenovo laptop and a pair of eyeglasses were also stolen. The grey Honda HRV registration number TL706 was recovered at Girardel on Monday the 21st of March 2016. TL706 and TJ962 
are being processed by the Crime Scenes Unit of the Criminal Investigations Department. If you have information which can assist the police with investigations, contact the Criminal Investigations Department at 266-5164, 266-5165, and 266-5119, or contact Crime Stoppers Dominica at telephone number 1-800-8477. In other news now, the 2016 Carnival Princess has continued on her path to helping the children in the Dominican society. Here's more. This as Rain Benjamin made a donation of food items to Chances in Jimit on Wednesday. Chances is an institution which provides a temporary home for at-risk children under 18 years in need of care and protection. One of my aims as the reigning Carnival Princess is to support other children in need and bring some joy to them. This donation to the Children of Chances is just a few projects that I plan to take on during my reign as Carnival Princess. Hope it helps. Thank you to the principal, teachers, and students for their continued support. This school rocks. From the words of a dear friend, service to humanity is the best work of life. Managing Director of Chances says this donation is highly commendable. Honestly, that was a very good initiative to think of children in your community, children helping children. Chances is a home for children in need of care and protection. Food is of paramount importance and when each Rain could encourage everyone here to bring something for children in need of care and protection. That is great. So I want to thank every single one of you. I want to encourage your parents to do like other parents, like the parents of Rain, to encourage your children to think of others. Meantime, mother of the Carnival Princess called on parents to tap into their children's potential. I told her that the, after winning, um, it doesn't stop there. It has to continue, not just as a Carnival Princess, but making a positive impact out there, especially for children. This initiative is just one of the few that Rain will be taking upon. Just yesterday, that she made a presentation of toys to the Clare Harbour Cares Committee. Parents, tap into your children's potential, tap into their positive side, tap into their skills, and just go on and most of all, put God first in everything that you do. You were watching Channel 5 News coming up. More police news, chit chat on mapping 2K4's programming lineup, sports and weather. Thank you for staying with us. President of the National Cooperative Credit Union is calling on members affected by Erica to come in and speak with them since their six month grace period for repayment has expired. Dexter Ducre told Channel 5 News they can work with members who are genuinely unable to repay their loans. What we did is that everybody who affected our loans with us, we gave them six months grace. So they did not have to pay installments for six months and we paid for all the interests. So interest and installments, the installments were deferred, deferred the, the, uh, the interest were waived. So they have six months to get, their, uh, get back on their feet. Ducre explained what would be required of people who are still unable to continue loan payments. To people who would need additional help, we're asking, okay, if you need additional help, maybe come in, we'll look at it. Come into the credit union, we'll look at it for sure. And this thing has to be done by case by case basis. So who has been still been affected, still have challenges, you know, we have to look at in. Because what we do, okay, we, can, we can give a further deferment on people who have a genuine case eh, in terms of their loans. In other police news, one young man is in police custody in connection with the seizure of over 11,000 grams of cannabis. 21-year-old Staffordson Mitchell of Mount Prosper was arrested and charged on Saturday for possession of 232 grams of cannabis weed. Meanwhile, another significant quantity of cannabis has been seized in the Grand Bay area. The Special Service Unit, Marine Unit, Task Force, and the Drug Squad Unit of the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force carried out an anti-drug operation in the heights of Grand Bay on Sunday, the 20th of March, 2016. 11,350 grams of alleged cannabis weed 
was seized. No arrests were made. Investigations are ongoing. In an unrelated story, the Caribbean region is about to see a brand new work of art by Dominica's Alwyn Bully. This was among the outcomes of an OECS audiovisual workshop held in Dominica recently. The screenplay for a television series is currently in its development phase and Bully is creating the storyline for this pilot project. The participants, we all agreed that we would work on a six-part TV series and working from a script concept that Alwyn Bully has developed, he will be guiding the process in terms of the, developing the script. The islands involved are Dominica, St. Lucia, Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, we also have Guadeloupe, which was, uh, we had resource people from Guadeloupe, and we're looking at doing some partnership uh, productions with the French islands, and we also had Grenada. Canham says there are many phases to go through before a television series is ready and available. The first phase is the script development. We have a concept from um, Alwyn Bully, uh, and we have some rough outlines of potential uh, avenues that this could go and also then to start to develop a financing plan and look at where we're going to actually get the financial support to produce this. So this takes time, usually takes several months to finalize scripts of this nature and then another several months to finalize the financing and identify the support uh, and then the production to plan the production. It's a very exciting process but we hope after this process we'll have not only a series that we can distribute across the region and internationally but also a new model for developing television content in the region. The workshop saw participants from seven OECS countries come together to look at strategies for producing and distributing content across the region and internationally. One of the issues that we have as producers and directors is how to finance and distribute audiovisual content. That's a huge issue because of the financing, because of the distribution channels, um, a lot of reasons that it's a, it's a struggle for us. So we're looking at ways that we can find new models for financing projects, films, as well as TV series, and getting it out, not just in our own islands, but also in the other islands and internationally. So we came together at this workshop to look at different ways that we can overcome these barriers. We actually brought in some of the distributors. They're very interested in increasing the level of local content, but it's a question of financing. It's a question of how we can work together with them to make that possible. Um, and it was very positive, and I think that, um, you know, it's a start, and we need to keep the dialogue going. Finally, the first ever Hubert Nicholas Joseph Scholarship has been launched. This aid bank initiative is in honor of one of the institution's past directors, Hubert Joseph served on the Board of Directors of the Aid Bank from 2002 to 2015. The scholarship is in his name, will place special focus on entrepreneurship. The scholarship is for two-year associate degree in entrepreneurship and will cover academic costs, tuition, fees, learning material including a computer, stipend towards transportation and incidentals. Now the rationale behind the scholarship for the scholarship that has been offered the aid bank continues to enhance its role and visibility as a good corporate citizen in the Commonwealth of Dominica by supporting causes considered important to the development of the economy. The aid bank is also offering the Robert Alfred Henry Agriculture Scholarship for the second year. This is the second year of the scholarship. And we are pleased to report that Mr. Daisy James, the recipient of the first scholarship for agriculture, in honor of Mr. Robert L. Ford Henry, has performed credibly at the Dominican State College. It is also noteworthy that Mr. James is also a young agricultural farmer who is exhibiting some of his agricultural products this morning. The Robert L. Ford Scholarship for two year associate degree in agriculture will also cover the academic costs, tuition fees, learning material, stipend, and, in, and incidentals. Persons will be invited to apply for the Robert L. Ford Scholarship for Agriculture in the academic year commencing September 16th. Joining us on Chit Chat is our very own Chantel, who is going to talk to us about our additional channels, 11 additional channels, which will be added or is already added yes. on our mapping lineup. Talk to us about that, Chantel. I'm excited, Lurian, to be here excited tonight. Too. I'm very excited because... Less is also more, and more 
is less at mapping. Hmm. <laughs> so we don't have the less is more motto. We have the more is less motto at mapping. Wow. We give you 11 additional channels and not just any channels, movie channels. So imagine we're going to the supermarket with $100 and we arrive at the supermarket and they give us 11 additional coupons. That's to take home more items. That's what you're shopping at Mapping. Wonderful. So tell us what channels we're talking about. HBO, Max, mm -hmm. Cinemax, Warner, Sony, AXN, E, and much, much more. Max is on channel 27. Mm -hmm. HBO, of course, for all the movie lovers. And our Game of Thrones. Yes. Enthusiasts. Let's tune in to channel 28. And Cinemax for Easter. Your Easter holidays are coming up. You don't necessarily have to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. A glass of wine. Home. Cut Watch your foot movies. up, Cinemax, tune into channel 29. And if any of these channels are not your picking, we have Warner, Sony, yes. AXN, mm -hmm. and E. And for our Spanish speaking persons, we're not leaving you out. Universal, Telemundo, just tune in. And it's only at Mapping 2K4. Wonderful. Well, you heard it right here. Sports is next with Kenny Williams. Hello everyone and here are your sports highlights. Cricket takes the first knock. Assistant coach of the Win Lotto Windward Islands Under-15 team Kevin James says preparing the team for the upcoming tournament has its challenges but is progressing well. James is one of the selectors for the competition. Training has been coming along very well. We started training on the 12th of February, the about, and uh, we have been going for six weeks so far. Uh, we have we started with 24 boys and we want to do a selection somewhere on Tuesday this week. Uh, the boys have been, been going through the pieces, they've been doing pretty well. Uh, we have had quite a few trial matches so far. James says the bowling department has been key to the team's performance in the past. We are very much looking forward to the boys' performance in the competition because they have been doing pretty well in the session. We know that over the years of bowling has been, been doing very good for us, but we noticed in the trial matches that boys have been scoring quite a bit around. We have had a few matches where the guys have scored, quite a few guys have scored half centuries. The final trial match against selection was held Wednesday and the full squad is expected to be named by Thursday. 24 boys are vying for the spot on the team, however 17 will be chosen including four reserves. The sports division oversees the selection process and the competition is expected to run from April 1 to 10. On the football scene, head coach of the national football team Shane Marshall says there were drawbacks re-preparation for the upcoming Caribbean Cup but is confident that Dominica can take home the win. His comments come ahead of Dominica's game against the BVI on Saturday. I'm not too satisfied with what we have been going on for the past couple of months. You know, players haven't been showing up for practice as I would want them to. You know, but I still confident. You know, seeing that BVI we're going to play against, I still confident we could pull up a victory against BVI. Well, tonight, as you could see, we have some um, coaches, you know, from uh, America is here, so we're going to have a little game against them. And we're just going to try to execute our game plan against them this evening. You know, the areas where we were lacking, you know, we're going to see if we can improve on it tonight. And hopefully by game time we'll be ready. Still in sports, the South Dakota University and Mars Sports Academy have partnered to help develop football on island. President of the university, Amy Novak, says she enjoys working with children and believes sports can be a positive outlet for them. We've really enjoyed the opportunity to work with the young people across Dominica this past week and it's been a pleasure for us to learn from them and hopefully to inspire them to continue to work hard and stay healthy and use sports as a vehicle um, for meeting friends and making lifelong opportunities available to them. I love working with the young primary school um, students and they have a great heart for life and a great passion for life and I want to continue to inspire them to um, work hard in their studies, work hard at school, work hard on, in sports because sports is a vehicle for people to feel good about themselves and to continue to have positive self-esteem. Twelve university and several secondary school students are on island working with the children. Going back to cricket, England registered a 15-run win over Afghanistan in Wednesday's edition of the World T20 Series. 
Going into bat first, England posted 142 for seven. Moeen Ali scored 41, while James Vince added 22 and David Willey 20. Afghanistan replied with 127 in their fully allotted overs. S. Shafiq 35 and S. Shenwari 22. In the other men's match, Bangladesh put up a good fight in their turn at the crease but were bested by India by one run after the last ball was bowled in the 20th over. India took first knock ending on 146 for 7. Suresh Reina 30, Virat Kohli 24 and Shikhar Dawan 23 for India. Bangladesh resisted the Indian bowling attack as best as they could, replying with 145 for 9. The Bangladesh batsmen held their own against India as Tamim Iqbal scored the most for his team, registering 35. Meantime, in the women's match, the combined efforts of Trisha Chetty, 35, and Lizelle Lee, 30, helped put South Africa in a comfortable position as their team beat Ireland by 67 runs. South Africa batted first and scored 156 for five. Ireland women could only make 189 in reply with no batswoman topping Claire Shillington's 34. In high school games, Dominica State College boys handed down a 47-point hammering to Dominica Grammar School in Tuesday's version of the Sports Division's Under-20 Basketball Championship. Edmund Williams had 22 points, Ethan Boland 13 with 6 rebounds and 4 assists, while Nathan Sebastian chipped in with 6 points, 15 rebounds, 3 steals and 3 assists for Dominica State College. Scoring for DGS, Nell Lethem had 13 points, 10 rebounds and 3 steals, while Joshua Fontaine, 16 points and 5 rebounds. Meantime, the semi-finalists have been determined. St. Mary's Academy and Dominica State College are the qualifiers for Zone A. Zone B semi-finalists are Portsmouth Secondary and Northeast Comprehensive. The competition will resume after a week's break on April 6 at the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School grounds between PSS and ITSS. That match is scheduled for 3 in the afternoon. Finally in sports, Youth Sports Officer Delbert Hazel says the recently concluded NBD Football Championship had seen some improvements over the years. His comments come at the close of the games where St. Mary's Academy was crowned the 2016 champions. This year the league went very well. I must say that the standard of, of football was a little better than last year. The coaches actually had a little more time to develop their strategies and their plays with their teams. That's all the sports for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. Now for the midweek weather forecast. Good evening, Dominique, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marsha Alexander. I trust that we all had a happy World Meteorology Day today. We begin by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery and what it showed. Some patches of low-level clouds across to the east of the island chain and moving westwards. Now, taking a look at earlier visible satellite imagery and what it showed. Increased cloudiness mainly across the eastern coast of Dominica today. Now, earlier radar imagery indicated just a few scattered showers across the island chain during today. Tonight's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy and breezy with a few rift scattered showers and tomorrow's weather is expected to be partly cloudy to cloudy and breezy with a few brief scattered showers. Sea conditions are expected to be moderate in open water with waves peaking up to 8 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. Conditions for the next three days, partly cloudy to cloudy skies, Wave scattered showers can be expected throughout the three-day period. Also, breezy conditions expected to persist throughout the three-day period. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies, and also breezy conditions with scattered showers can be expected throughout the central and northern portion of the island chain, with a relative improvement in conditions expected across the extreme southern portion of the chain. Our international cities forecast, partly cloudy skies expected in New York, and Caracas, some thunderstorm activity expected in Miami, some rain expected in London, and clear skies expected in Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.06 a.m. and sunset will be at 6.17 p.m. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit the website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again, a much tougher retaining wall to form part of major rehabilitation works at the Douglas Charles Airport. 
Aid Bank reports its second largest net profit in four decades as the Prime Minister calls on customers to be more responsible in servicing their loans. And credit union members whose loan repayment was affected by Erica may have to renegotiate as a six-month grace period comes to an end. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. On behalf of the production team, I'm Dorian Graham Carter. To all viewers around the world, thank you for watching.